Good evening, folks. We're back at the chainsaw here. We're slowly getting her together. We're kind of getting into a little bit of a finicky state right now. Now we just got to make sure we can find a coil that works. Got my little buddy here. Help me out. This is Bruno. Nice little chocolate lab. About four or five months old. So we're currently we're uh, getting into the finicky state of this uh, chainsaw rebuild. How I mean that is we're dealing with a little bit of electrical on the coil. It, it's not terribly difficult, but it's just a matter of if if things are typically like how we're doing. We're using old uh, salvage parts, so it is possible that the reason the saw was put a commission was that a coil was breaking down and that way we won't know it until we kind of start to run it because what happens is if if your saw is dying after it warms up that's typically a good sign that your coil is breaking down they'll have they'll have uh, they'll have spark when they're cold but when they warm up they'll break down so it's kind of a frustrating issue, but when, when you know what you're looking for, it's pretty straightforward. So we're going to go throw this, throw this uh, coil in and plug away. Before we get started, if you could subscribe, Bruno wants you to, and who can say no to a cute pup? Yeah, see, told you. All right, let's get started. Again. The older style of chain of this series of chainsaw, they run two sets of coils, or I'm not sure how, what the proper name is for each one. Newer ones, they just run one over here. I don't know if you can go just to the one uh, coil. Uh, for some reason, I'm thinking that the bolts don't actually line up. So that's just that. It's pretty easy to get this coil spaced. What you typically do is you find a business card or some sort of thicker paper type stock stuff. And you put it between the, the coil and you spin it up onto the magnet so it sucks it in tight. And that way it'll be spaced at about 15 thou. Locker in. Then you pull it out. Which is perfect. So over here they did this goofy thing. I don't know why they couldn't really think of a better system than this, but what they do is they take a a small screw. And it goes through the two eyes of the wire and then screws into that plastic um, insulator. Kind of a stupid system, but it did work. <laughs> so the charge comes from this coil, comes through this wire, connects those two then it comes in here where it's finally distributed out to the carburetor or to the spark plug not the carburetor now the black wire hits the kill switch and I see I got a bit of a fray there so that's kind of one more of the finicky things that can happen is if you get a little crack on that and it starts to ground on the body it'll kill your spark to fix that, I'm just going to throw a piece of shrink tube over top of it. So this one here, it's kind of garbage, this dust shield. I didn't notice. 
but it's missing it's missing that top section and it's kind of important you need that for locking your kill wire in there that kill wire just kind of clips up into here and it runs through here this little hole So we have this uh, basically all wired up so that it should spark if there's is spark. So I'm gonna typically I hook up a recoil. And I'm gonna just drive it with the impact and see if we can get some spark out of it. Right now there's really really weak spark. I don't know if that showed up at all. It's only when it's spinning at a pretty pretty rapid pace. I'm gonna first one I'm gonna change is this one and see if it makes a difference. Tiny tiny bit of spark. So this is kind of a perfect explanation if you're so if, if you're bored with this uh, process of electronics you can kind of see why it was a good idea that they switched to a single single coil that way it's not difficult to, to tell so if it's not sparking, it's pretty self-explanatory what's going on. It's just you replace one part. So in my opinion, that's a decent amount of spark. It's should do the trick. So we'll throw that in there. So this piece here is actually kind of important. It, what it does is it kind of acts like a, a pump housing. So it gives the, so what it does is it sucks air in to here and then forces it up through the top. And then it comes out through the fins and cools. That's why that side is open. And this side closes, it pumps air up through this hole and then shoves it out this side here. So my plan for this saw is to have it pretend to be a, a smaller saw as crazy folks tend to refer to it as a sleeper saw. Kind of goofy but so it'll actually have 272 head under it with a Husqvarna 61 top cover. So we're we're currently we're currently at the uh, one of the last differences between the 272 and the 266. So this here is a 266 cover. This is a 272. At first glance, they they seem reasonably close. So on here, you'll see you'll see two holes. This is just a bolt, so don't look at that one. So one, two, and one, two. So on the old style of of cover, those are the holes that are showing. Those are the ones you bolt into. And what they did with the new style is they've moved to um, so 
So then, then they move to those that one there, and and hopefully that's showing all right. So basically, what they did on this side, they moved both holes back half an inch. So you can't unfortunately go buy a brand new nice cover for this without modifying your your saw. The cover does fit. She's pretty snug. It really jams that that uh, spark plug boot up in there. And to be perfectly honest with you, it really is nice having a nice brand new bright orange top cover after you've rebuilt your saw. So, as you like, you compare the two. One's that faded orange and the other one's nice and bright. So this this one I've already redone. It's a fairly straightforward process. Maybe I'll get into it in another video. So I'm gonna sign off. Get these videos up to the old land of YouTubes. Do me a favor, subscribe, and see if there's any other videos on my channel that you want to watch. I don't only do chainsaw stuff, I do all sorts of stuff around the homestead. Stuff that I find interesting, maybe you'll find it interesting too. Anyways, take care guys, have a great day.